Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about dark matter. We're going to be talking about the reasons why we think dark matter exists even though we haven't found it. Welcome to What The Math. So there were actually quite a lot of experiments that tried to discover dark matter and actually pinpoint at what um, causes the effects that we see. But as of today, as of July of 2018, not a single experiment succeeded, even though it cost us billions of dollars. There's, some experiments were actually insane in the way that they were created, but still nothing. But today we're going to be talking about five reasons why we actually think dark matter is real. In other words, let's actually take a look at the visual cues and reasons why we think there is something out there that is causing all of the stuff that we call dark matter. And to try to understand how we even came up with the idea of dark matter, we have to go back in time to 1933. And this is a, an astronomer by the name of Fritz Zwicky, who was actually looking at this, the comma cluster of galaxies. He actually measured the mass of each of the galaxies and the speed of motion of each of the galaxies. And using a mass to speed analysis, he predicted uh, the galaxies should technically be flying away from one another extremely fast. He couldn't understand how they were actually still staying together and how they were showing the patterns of motion that we were observing. And he coined the term dark matter for matter that we couldn't see that was creating the gravitational attraction between these galaxies. Fast forward this event to 2006 and Chandra X-ray Observatory produces this beautiful image of the bullet cluster. This is also a cluster of several galaxies. But these galaxies, unlike the previous cluster, are actually colliding. And their collision is producing these beautiful effects that you see on the screen. Now, the important thing to see here is there's something in red and there's something in blue. These are actually created by a computer. You don't really see this if you take a look at the actual um, cluster in a normal telescope. The red stuff here is essentially regular matter or the effects of regular matter. And the blue stuff that you see on the sides is the uh, effect of dark matter or basically the gravitational effects of dark matter. And this is actually a visual recreation of this event. So two galactic clusters colliding. The blue matter doesn't interact with anything, so it passes directly through. The red, which is um, essentially just regular matter, does uh, interact. And so it creates an image that you see right here. But interestingly, we also observe effects of gravitational lensing, and it just so seems that uh, the gravitational lensing shows us that the biggest gravitational attraction comes from here and also from here, not from the center. But visually, there is really nothing here, or almost nothing here. A lot of the matter is mostly concentrated in the middle, visual matter. So there seems to be a, this invisible dark patch here and dark patch here, that's tremendously larger in gravitational attraction, which once again kind of shows us that there is definitely some kind of a strange dark matter effect going on that we can't really explain otherwise. Proof number three comes from the cosmic background radiation, or also known as cosmic microwave background, which you see on the screen. We've talked about this previously. And what is interesting here is the actual observation versus prediction. Now, uh, it's kind of difficult to explain the exact reasons for this. So I'm going to actually point you to a simulation that does a better job of this. And this is a completely free simulation from Planck Institute, uh, basically a CMB simulator. Here you can create your own galaxy, put in as much matter, dark matter and dark energy as you want, and then see how it compares to the real thing uh, in terms of percentages, but also in terms of age, uh, shape, and um, fundamental scale, a concept that actually requires its own video. But anyway, let's say everything is made up of regular matter, there's no dark matter, no dark energy, let's see what this would actually create. The CMB would look like this, which it really doesn't, it would be a lot more clumpy. And here, the galaxy would be expected to be about 9.7 billion years old, um, and it would only be about 6% compatible, 6% as similar to the reality. However, if you start uh, increasing dark matter, the percentage goes up as well. So here is a shape of a galaxy or a look of a galaxy that has way more dark matter. And then if you start putting dark energy in there as well, um, it changes the look of CMB as well. So here we actually need to start playing around with this. 
And you'll see that as you decrease the number of normal letter, the percentage actually goes up. So it turns out that current estimates put the actual normal matter at like 5%. Uh, dark matter at something like 27.5% and the huge amount of stuff is really dark energy. So right around here, we're going to hit a sweet spot. There you go. 67.5%. This creates a galaxy that's just the right age, just the right shape and just the right everything. 100% compatible. And so here, the simulated universe is actually almost exactly the same as our own universe. In other words, uh, the background radiation seems to show us that there is definitely not only dark matter, but also a huge amount of dark energy that actually reshaped the galaxy from when the actual Big Bang occurred, first light appeared, and then reached planet Earth. You can play around with the simulation using the link in the description below, but let's continue to the reason number four, and this is essentially the large structures in our universe. Well, including actually galaxies. Various uh, super, super massive structures in the universe would not actually have enough time to form if, there, if it wasn't for dark matter. There's just not enough matter in the universe to provide enough gravity for some of these structures to form. And this actually does apply to even our own galaxy. So. If you give something 13.8 billion years and just the gravity from normal matter, it will not have enough time to clump. The gravity is just not enough to create something as beautiful and as massive as, for example, this galaxy you see right there, or the galaxies we're going to be flying through um, in, an, in the next few seconds. So all of these beautiful galaxies we are flying uh, past right now, uh, including clusters, including mega clusters, including these huge massive structures we've discovered in the last few years. All of them were created mostly because dark matter had enough time to clump uh, into chunks of dark matter, which then provided sort of a foundation for everything else to form around. And the fifth reason for why we think dark matter exists is probably the most compelling one. Now, this is the reason that basically kind of convinced me back in the days as well. It's the reason that is most obvious. If you take a look at any galaxy, and let's just take a look at the Milky Way that you see right here, and you try to measure the speed of stars close to the galaxy, farther away from the center of the galaxy, and also on the outskirts of the galaxy, you would expect the same effects as you would from a, a solar system, for example. So here, what are, um, when something is close to the sun, like for example, Earth, it would be moving a lot faster. So here the speed is 30 kilometers per second than something that's farther away like Saturn. Saturn is only moving at about 9 kilometers per second and Uranus, uh, which is right there, is moving at 6.5 kilometers per second. So the farther away from the center you go, the uh, less orbital speed you get, right? Well, no. As a matter of fact, all of the observations from every single galaxy, including our own, show that it doesn't seem to work that way. Our sun is moving at approximately relatively same speed as a star somewhere in the middle, close to the center of our galaxy. And that really kind of breaks the whole concept. Why exactly does that occur? It just so happens that if you were to simulate a galaxy where you would place a huge amount of gravitational attraction in the so-called halo around the galaxy, in other words, if you were to place a bunch of dark matter there, it would actually look exactly the same as it does in real life. And so today we think that there is a huge amount of dark matter orbiting around galaxies or basically forming the actual galactic shapes by moving around galaxies, uh, thus allowing those stars like our sun to move so fast and not be completely thrown out of the galactic systems. And so this reason itself is enough to actually start speculating what exactly is dark matter and if it does exist, what is it actually made of? So that's a question we don't have an answer to, but we do definitely know that dark matter seems to exist. Anyway, so that's it for five reasons for why we think dark matter is real and why it's out there and why it actually has such a tremendous effect on our universe. Thank you for watching. Space out, subscribe, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.